Est-ce que le néo-réalisme italien a une influence sur vous Ça a été important pour vous People, before I left for England, professional filmmakers here had told me that you cannot work on location. It is not possible. The light is out of control, your control. In the studio, it's under your control. You cannot work with non-professional actors. You cannot work with amateurs or people who have never faced the camera because they cannot act and you cannot go to the trouble of teaching them. That would take a long time. But I saw that this is one man, De Sica, who had done that, exactly what I wanted to do. And if he can do it, why can't I It was as simple as that. Est-ce qu'il y a un metteur en scène américain qui est important à vos yeux, qui a eu de l'influence sur vous Not one, many. Once you wrote John Ford. Well, John Ford certainly was there. Uh, John Ford, William Wyler, George Stevens, Billy Wilder, particularly, be became a favorite eventually. Billy Wilder? Billy Wilder became a great favorite. And I, I met him in Cannes, so I was delighted to meet him. And I told him that I had written him a letter when I was 21, a four-page letter full of admiration, pointing out the wonderful things he had done, and he never replied. <laughs> he apologized. <laughs> So, Billy Wilder was one, and then, um, of course, you have uh, the Frank Capra, Ernst Lubitsch, uh, uh, very early memories of the early Maurice Chevalier, Janet McDonald and Lubitsch films, you see. You Love like Parade and Smiling Lieutenant and that sort of thing. You, you know? like what they call the Lubitsch touch? Yes, yes. Very perceptible, that touch. But It's very distinctive. But does the Lubitsch touch have something to do with, I don't know, the humor in Bengal or not? Or was it... Not really. I, I don't think so. What is humor in... But you know, I mean, uh, it's universal. I mean, I laughed at it, uh, being a Bengali. I was... Uh, so I laughed at it. So that he was using a language which was really understood everywhere. He was not thinking of just America or France or anything like that. Vous avez écrit « Je fais des films sur la classe moyenne parce que je la connais bien ». Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire quel genre de famille était la vôtre what we would, how would you describe it? What is Zamindar in French? <laughs> uh, he came from that family. He was, that became that by adoption. He was not originally that, but by adoption he became that. But he was not interested in, in that aspect. He was more interested in science and other things. So he came to Calcutta, settled in Calcutta, studied in Calcutta, then became interested in printing. Uh, he uh, started a printing press and he invented printing methods which were used in the West, although he never took out a patent on them. So everybody can lay a claim to them, but he was uh, a remarkable man. He was also a violinist. He was a marvelous writer for children. Uh, he, was, he had this marvelous printing press uh, uh, producing work which is not bettered even today, half-tone processes, you see. Not uh, uh, offsets, but half-tone in those days, and line blocks. And, but he died six years before I was born. Then my father continued the business. My father, my grandfather, the father had never been abroad. He read journals, books, and on the subject that he was interested in, and by sheer dint of invention, he was able to produce th uh, original things, uh, but he never went abroad. But he sent my father abroad to study printing technology. He studied in London and Manchester. He came back, uh, and by that time, soon after that, my grandfather died, and my father, father took over the press. 
Uh, and then in 1921 I was born, and in two years later he died. So I, I have hardly any, practically no memories of my father. So uh, I eventually moved to my uncle's house, maternal uncle's, on my mother's side, maternal uncle's house, and that's where I grew up. I was not exposed to a creative atmosphere. There was music around me, because everybody on my mother's side, as I told you yesterday, could sing. So I was surrounded by song, by music in general, uh, and, but as a creative person, I think I could, even as a small boy, I could sketch, I could draw. That was an inborn uh, gift. I could draw, I used to draw portraits, I used to draw cartoons and things like that. And finally I decided that after my graduation, I would go to Tagore's University, which is about 100 miles from Calcutta. And it, this was my mother's wish, more than my wish. Actually, she said that, why don't you, you're still so young, uh, you don't need a job now, why don't you go and spend some time in that university? Tagore was still living. It was alive. So I went to Shantiniketan, which is the name of the university. I studied fine arts. I studied painting. I, I learned to be, I studied as a painter after my graduation in economics, in case you're interested, which didn't interest me at all. But uh, I think my college years were quite wasted. I enjoyed school life very much, but not college life, because I chose the wrong subject. Anyway, I went to Shantiniketan, I studied painting for two and a half years. Tagore died during my stay, and I felt that I had learned enough. And, but I imbibed a tremendous number of ideas. I be became familiar with art, uh, with the fine arts of both the West and the East. And I knew all the schools of painting, Eastern and Western. And there, there was a German professor who was teaching English. He's a Jewish refugee who used to play the piano. And uh, there was a piano in Tagore's home, uh, the big, huge building downstairs, there was a piano. He would play the piano and I would turn the pages for him. That's how it helped me to learn staff notation. And we used to listen to records together in the evenings. So music and painting, went on side by side. But I felt that as a painter, I didn't want to become a painter. I felt I was getting a little, little by degrees more and more interested in the cinema. Because in this university, there were three or four books in the art, in the art section library on the cinema. One was Paul Rotha's book on documentary. One was uh, uh, another book on the theory of the film on the aesthetic aspect of the film, two or three books, which I read. And I think that made me interested in the directorial aspect of the cinema. And I remember I was there when Citizen Kane opened in Calcutta. And I was so unhappy because I couldn't, I couldn't leave. There was no holiday then. I couldn't come to Calcutta and see the film. But so music, cinema, and painting. But I decided to become a commercial artist, a commercial designer, because uh, I was very interested in illustration. I was interested in advertising as a creative profession. So I joined the British Advertising Agency after coming back to Calcutta. Only after five or six months after my return from the university, I got my job as a junior visualizer, what is called. So I learned advertising there. At the same time, the interest in cinema grew. I started the film club. I, uh, I founded the film society with a group of friends. And um, I went on. I became the art director of the agency. I produced some, some of uh, very, uh, what are considered to be quite original uh, advertising designs, campaigns, as we call them. Uh, partly because of my uh, being familiar with tra traditional roots of Indian art. Uh, 